Lesson 30, Reaction to Jesus. In today's lesson, we see Jesus again busy at work as the servant of God and laboring in the regions of Galilee. We shall see how the Pharisees and scribes reacted to Jesus, bringing several complaints against him. Jesus used this occasion to teach about a whole new way in which God would deal with his people. Once they had to obey God under law or be cursed, but in the new covenant they would serve under the principle of grace. Jesus had returned to Capernaum and was doing some preaching there, and this caused large crowds to gather and hear him. While in a house preaching, the crowds were so large that many were outside around the house, making it nearly impossible to enter into the house to see Jesus. When four men brought their crippled friend to the house to see Jesus, they could not find a way to enter. So they climbed up on the roof and removed some of the loose roofing and lowered the crippled man into the house for Jesus to heal. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the crippled man, Your sins are forgiven you. Now this may seem a strange thing for Jesus to say, for the man was brought to him to be healed, and yet Jesus is just talking about forgiving his sins. We can learn from this that a man being forgiven of his sins is of much greater importance than his being healed from sickness or a crippled body. Jesus is much more interested in healing you from your sin so that you can be in heaven than healing you from some physical sickness only to make you comfortable for the days that you are in this world. Some of the scribes were in the room when Jesus said these words and thought to themselves that Jesus was blaspheming because he was forgiving sin, which they knew was something only God could do. It did not occur to them that Jesus himself was God and so assumed that he was blaspheming with these words. Jesus knew their thoughts, and so he said to the crippled man that he should arise, take up his bed, and go his way. The man was instantly healed, and all in the room marveled at the power which Jesus demonstrated. Jesus had asked the people, Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or arise, take up your bed, and walk? To say to a crippled man to get up and walk was clearly much more difficult to say unless you had the power and authority of God to heal. Jesus was demonstrating that he not only had the power to heal the man, but also had the authority to forgive sins. As Jesus taught again by the seaside and the crowds gathered to listen, he called another man to be a follower, Matthew, a tax collector. Matthew had Jesus to his house for dinner and invited other tax collectors and sinners, and this made the Pharisees and scribes complain to Jesus. They reacted to this with indignation, thinking, How can this man of God eat and drink with sinners? Jesus said to them, It is not the healthy that need a doctor, but those who are sick. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Christians should remember this principle when trying to share the gospel with others. Sometimes we confine ourselves to our church buildings and preach to the converted, while there are many lost sinners outside the walls of our churches who need to hear of God's goodness and salvation. We should not be afraid to go into the world and preach the gospel wherever we meet people. The Pharisees also complained that Jesus' disciples did not fast like others. Jesus told them that they did not need to fast while the bridegroom, that is Jesus, was with them. But when he was taken away from them, then they would fast. Fasting is a means of showing repentance or sorrow before God and therefore has its place in our lives when we want to show God that we are sorry about our sin or seeking for his guidance. Fasting is not meant to be some religious ritual that Christians are obliged to perform without any apparent reason. It is an individual exercise 
of demonstrating a repentant heart or seeking for the Lord's guidance and help in certain circumstances. Jesus takes this opportunity to teach about a new way in which God will deal with his people. He uses two illustrations to make his point. He says no one will sew unshrunk cloth on old clothing for it will tear away and no one will put new wine in old wineskins. What Jesus was trying to say was that the old way God dealt with his people, that is through the law and obedience, was not compatible with the new way that God would deal with his people, and that was based on the principle of grace. The Old Testament was a period in which God expected his people to obey the law or be cursed. This system of law failed to make men righteous before God, but only added to their guilt before God. For man is not capable of keeping God's law. The new covenant was established when Jesus died upon the cross to pay the penalty for man's sins. All those who accept Jesus as their sin bearer and acknowledge him as Lord are saved, forgiven, and now live under the principle of grace. That means that they are no longer under condemnation because of sin, but have found forgiveness through Christ. A Christian is motivated to live in holiness and fulfill the righteous demands of God because of God's grace and his personal gratitude towards God for freely saving his soul. These two systems are not compatible with each other and cannot be mixed. This is what Jesus was trying to teach the Pharisees who wanted to hold his disciples under law. They also were complaining about the disciples picking grain to eat on the Sabbath. But Jesus tells them that David ate the showbread, which was not lawful to eat, but under the circumstances was necessary. He teaches from this that the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. When Jesus heard it, he said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Mark chapter 2, verse 17.